greetings artists. My name is Daniel Callen and I am an artist and the art teacher at Lichten Springs K-8. I miss all of my amazing student artists and the cool stuff they make every day. And so I'm really excited to bring an art lesson to you and to share my love of visual arts with you today. Now, as you can probably tell, I am at home and I've been spending a lot of time around home lately, which has made me kind of wonder and think, how have artists shown their homes and places in their communities that are special to them? Let's take a look. How do artists show home. This one is simple and stylized. Or this one has lots of detail and feels so alive. This one's serene and calm. Bright and colorful. The texture in this one feels soft and velvety. This one has so much drama. Look at all the details. It could be a whole room, or it could be really simple and just a chair or piece of furniture. This is a 3D model of a fancy house. Here's another sculpture of an artist's studio. It could be outside and bright and full of cheer, or it could be inside your bedroom and full of movement but they always have texture and detail. So we just saw some great examples of how artists have shown their rooms and spaces that are close to them uh, in both 2D and 3D. And what I noticed is that they all had a lot of details. So today we're going, uh, we're going to do a project where we take inspiration from the works of these artists and we're going to actually make a 3D model of our room. And it could be the room you have now, it could be your dream room, it could be somewhere in between there. But the key thing is we need to think of details that will show what makes that room special. Details. Uh, we're gonna use a variety of materials today. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of options and then I'll show you what I'm gonna use and then I'll show you how to make a project. So let's check out what kind of stuff maybe you might want to use on this project. Papers like construction paper, printer paper, cardstock, or even an old paper bag. Drawing tools, pencils, pens, markers, black crayons, anything you can draw with. Coloring media like markers, paint, crayons, oil pastels are great. And collage materials, magazines, wrapping paper, old coloring sheets. And some other tools. We need sticky stuff like glue, tape, some scissors, and paste. Wait, what is paste? So if you don't have any tape or any glue sticks or glue at home, it's really, really easy to make your own paste. And all you need is flour, salt, and water. And paste is an awesome sticky glue that you can use on any paper products, cardboard magazines, anything that's made out of paper. I'm gonna start by putting a big old scoop of flour in my container. Then I'm gonna sprinkle in some salt. You want quite a bit of salt. It's gonna keep it from getting stinky. And I'm gonna pour in some water. Uh, I wanna put in just a little bit of water at a time because it's hard to take water away, but you can always add a little more. Now I'm mixing it and I want it to be sticky, but I also need to be able to spread it and pour it. So I'm looking for a consistency where it sticks to my spoon, because that shows me that it's sticky, uh, but I can al it also kind of pour off of my spoon when I pick it up. And I'm still a little bit too thick here, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So you can always add more water, but I can't take it away if it gets too thin. And I'm gonna mix, mix, mix it. The more you stir it, the better. It helps to make the paste stickier. And that's looking about perfect. So you know it's ready when it will stick to your spoon, but it will also glop off in kind of big gloppy chunks like that. And that lets me know I can spread it and that it's sticky and it'll really hold together. I put my uh, paste in an airtight resealable container so that I can use it for a long time because a little paste goes a long way. So I'm gonna be using some paper I cut out from a paper bag, and I like this because it's pretty stiff, and I always have paper bags around. I'm gonna be using a pencil. It has my favorite art tool, an eraser, and a Sharpie because I love those big, bold lines. That's my personal choice. I need something to color with. So I'm gonna use some pastels. That'll give me that great Van Gogh look, but you could use any of those other options would be great. 
Uh, I also need some scissors and I'm gonna use some collage so I cut out a picture from a magazine and I just need something sticky like some paste. Perfect. Um, first we need to make this flat two-dimensional paper into a three-dimensional form. Our paper is two-dimensional because you can measure how tall it is and how wide it is, but that's it. It only has two dimensions, height and width. So we need to add a third dimension, which would be depth. Um, and to do this, we're going to fold our paper into six equal sections. I know that sounds tough, um, but they don't have to be perfect. And we're going to do our best to just make them about equal. The first thing we're going to do is fold it in half the long way. So now if you're keeping count, we have two equal sections. And once we have it in half long way, we're going to fold it into thirds. Now the way to fold something into thirds is you're going to take this end and it's gonna go halfway between the fold and the edge. So this looks about halfway to me. So that's gonna be about a third. And you can check it by folding over your other side. You can see I made it a little bit too big here, so you can actually just unfold it a little bit. And there we go. That is about thirds. So we have one, two, three sections times two, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six sections, which is exactly what we need. I want you to guess, uh, which side do you think is gonna be the walls of our room? Because we're making a room here. Yeah, the top are gonna be our walls. Um, so I'm actually going to kinda think about it that way. The top are gonna be our walls, the bottom is going to be the floor, and we're only gonna need one of these to be the floor. I'm gonna keep the middle one and make it the floor. Uh, so I'm gonna draw an X over the two floors I don't need, just so I don't waste my time. And to think about it, this is gonna, the left square is the left wall, the right square is the right wall, and the middle square is the back wall. This middle square is our floor. So I don't need to worry about these ones. Why not keep watching, and I'll show you. Uh, now that I know what's gonna go where, left wall, back wall, right wall, floor, I'm gonna think about the details of my room. Now this could be my actual bedroom, it could be my dream room, it could be a room that I used to have or one that I read about in a book or saw in a movie. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a dream room for my son, Towns. So I'm gonna add a lot of details of stuff that he really, really likes. And uh, I'm gonna surprise him with this and I think he's gonna really like it. Uh, so we're not gonna draw any furniture on here. We're just gonna draw the things on the wall. So to start, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fill this room with things that my son likes on the walls and on the floor. Um, I'm going to use a pen. Uh, drawing with a pencil is always a great idea. First, I'm gonna outline my corners. So I'm just adding a window in the back here to give some depth. I draw some diagonal lines and some parallel lines, and that'll help give it the illusion of depth. And I'm really wanting to add a lot of detail.
so these these walls, I think I'm gonna uh, collage. So I have um, this old coloring sheet, and I thought I could make a cool poster out of that. So I'm just gonna cut a poster, and this is actually a coloring sheet my son was doing, so I think he'll like that. And when I have my poster cut out, I can use a little bit of that paste that I made. Just gonna pull a little bit of that using my finger on the back. Outside, uh, you could print things out from, if you have a printer, you could print some things out to glue in. You could put uh, little drawings that you did and make posters, um, or you could use some fabric, right? So now I could add more details with my pen, but right now I'm going to actually go ahead and color this before I fold it. And I'm not adding a ton to the walls because I want to make sure to have space for uh, the furniture. What furniture you ask? Oh, just you wait, just you wait. So to color this, I'm going to use pastels. These are chalk pastels. And I like using pastels because they really kind of get uh, a painterly effect that I like. And to get that effect, I'm going to use them in groups of three. So if I'm making, um, now my son's favorite color is pink. So if I wanted to make him pink walls, I wouldn't just use pink. I would use pink, maybe a little bit of a darker pink and maybe some white or purple um, just to kind of give it some extra dimension. of good color everywhere. You have the things on the walls that you want to have on the walls. Your floor is done. Um, if you have a rug, you put that in. It's pretty simple to make this into your 3D room. All you're going to do is cut along each side of the floor to the center point, just to where the walls start. we're going to fold and we're going to make sure that the floor goes on top and help to kind of pre-fold this remind it of where it needs to go this is going to go underneath and this is going to go underneath that and you get you glue it together So when you glue it together, you get a room, just like that. So now you just need to secure the bottom with something. Tape is great. Uh, paste works, glue works, whatever you have on hand. I'm just going to quickly put a little bit of tape on there. And we can start to fill it with furniture. Now, what do you want to use for furniture? Well, you could use some toy furniture that you may have laying around. You could make furniture out of stuff you have. Recycled things are great. Um, and you could even make furniture out of more paper. So you want to think about scale, making sure things make sense. Obviously, these look a little strange together, but that's part of the fun is just trying out different things and then filling your room with all sorts of awesome stuff. Make it exactly the way you would love to see it. You want a video game corner? Make a video game corner. If you want a lava lamp, put in a lava lamp. If you want a bunk bed, this is a great place to try out that bunk bed. So do whatever you need to to make sure that this is, is your room and have fun with that. Now it's your turn. What kind of room will you make? As artists, we take inspiration from things that we see, but then we add our own ideas to make it our own. So I hope I've inspired you uh, to make something awesome that you can be proud of. And remember, this video and lots of other videos are available on the SPS YouTube site, so you can always rewatch this later. Thanks for making art to me today. Bye.